And then on top of this, I'll lay the microspheres. That one looks a little loose, but we'll take care of that. And I also want to get inside. And the way I've found to do that, real easy. I have this great little tool. There's nothing really special here. You could just make like a long hair bru a long handled brush, but something with a longer handle. Because what I need to do now is I need to get down inside the raw resin first. That's why we roughen up that end cap. Now the next step, while that's still wet, make me up a little bit of paste. Again, there's no set formula, it's just, that's a little bit on a thick side. That's just, just about right where it's thixotropic. Thixotropic means that it won't drip if you if you put it on a ceiling, it won't fall off the ceiling. Now, if it's on the thick side, it's even okay because we already have the raw resin right on. So, the first thing I want to do is get in here with some raw resin. Now, the reason I don't glue the back cap on right now is a lot of times a little drop will get into the vents. And it'll either not not totally clog them up, but restrict them in some way. And I'd like them to be open, of course. Now, once that's in there, and I like to force it through with a toothpick till it comes out. Those little just get some material in there. And take a toothpick. I said almost every operation on this is it's the worst of all worlds. It's toxic, it's dirty, time consuming, and expensive. It's it's like you couldn't pick a worse thing. My God. Now what should happen here if we get this just the way we'd like it, what will happen is it'll start to ooze out here and then we know we have it. But in the meantime. Let me get a little bit of raw resin on here. I've taken one of these and not sealed it on the outside just to see if it would seal, and it seals, but this is like double insurance. Because I think some people would actually manhandle the tanks or force them in or use a hammer to get the shims in or something. You want to be careful. You don't want to put the shims. You only need to put the shim right on the edge. You, don't, you should have nothing touching the middle of the tank if possible. And I've found Roasil foam to be an excellent thing to shim the tank with and it's, and it's about a third the weight of balsa wood. Okay, see now we have that. Now we need to get a couple of... Just clean out the extra so we don't take that along for the ride. And now we need to do up here. These should be well soaked in by now. We can get rid of the extra resin. And if you get the consistency just right, these will work out real nice. If it's a little too thick, they look, well, they just don't look as workmanlike as they should be. That flapping noise you hear in the background is the bird going crazy in the cage because he likes to come out here and eat this stuff. Okay, now we need the last little thing is to kind of 
just get any extra resin that's just going along for the ride here off. And it makes the cleanup operations at the end a lot easier if you don't have to deal with that. Okay, now, what I'll do is I'll let this dry in this dimension. This way the vents, will, the resin would tend to run down and seal the vents. They're sealed inside. And this little piece, see how it's already, it just can happen. But when, that's why we don't glue the back on. When we're done, we'll deal with if that fills up, we'll clean it out. And that's why it's a four-day operation to make one of these. Now, Wayne may have a trick here, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure I won't figure out a trick eventually, but it doesn't matter because at this point in time, we're able to make functional tanks. Okay, the next step is to just put this aside to dry and come back to it tomorrow. Today I looked at all the, uh, the joints that we made both inside and out and what I like to do, I like to make sure, because I still have access to the inside of the tank, that I've got a good fillet built up around all the tubes on the inside and in the back here a good fillet. And that looks like it's going to be fine. Before I put the back cap on, because obviously once I put the back cap on, I'm, I can't get back inside the tank without either removing the back or cutting a piece out. Now I wanted to show one of the, I made a, a, the other piece that we had to cut off, I had a spare end cap, so I'll probably make a small little tank on this. This will probably make about a four ounce tank, maybe for somebody with a profile or a profile cardinal or something like that. But anyway, this is the one we, we have to finish for a customer. So the next thing I want to show this on a close up, how this dries inside. I just wanted to show, see this is what usually happens when you when I've tried to put the back on at the same time, not waited the extra day. And what I do is I get in there with the with the grinder, just get rid of that. Make sure both of my tubes are perfectly free. And if for instance in here any of these spots that I don't have a real good fillet on, I can still get a little my little tool down in there and get a good fillet. And then the last step is going to be to get up get another end cap. And with the with the tank in this position, let that last little look at this. Hey, hey! People are not interested in you. They don't want it. Birds are everywhere. Get! Don't feed the birds in your neighborhood. That's the that's the rule of the day. Anyway, we want to get that last little piece on, and then we have a. A cleanup operation. I clean the whole tank. Now before I put the back on, I'll clean this all with M600, even if there's any other dust or anything in there, or the dust that's going to be from this little chipping spot. But then from that point on, I'll have, I have a cleanup operation. I want to deburr everything, and this tank will be ready to be put into service. And of course I'll pressure check it. I have a little pressure, little, uh, I don't know what you call those things, those little pumps that you can check for pressure. Now the trick is here, again, make my little, uh, a little cement mix. In effect, we're making glue. But before I put any glue on here, I've already stirred this with a metal stir. I want to put one layer of glue on everything. And the key is to keep everything, everything that's going to touch the glue, rough. Now I need to make up a little paste. Once I have that, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this tank be made. And if you've bought one or you're anticipating buying one, well, you'll have some idea of how much work Wayne put into the original design and Wayne for sure gets all the credit here. I've invented a lot of things in the world of model aviation unfortunately this is not one of them but I've carried on uh, from the good idea that Wayne has had an excellent idea and hope, 
hopefully made it commercially available.